The wind outside howled against the window pane, the frail branches of the barren trees scratching like skeletal fingers seeking entry. I lay there, cocooned under my blanket, the warmth serving as a stark contrast to the chilling darkness of my room. Every night was the same. The quiet town in which I lived was far from the bustle of the city, and it had its own brand of silence, a silence so profound that every tick of the wall clock felt like the heartbeat of the house. Every creak of the wooden floor whispered tales of ages past. I was drifting off to sleep when the first odd thing happened, a familiar lullaby, one my mother used to sing when I was a child, played faintly in the distance. It was so faint I believed I might have dreamt it. Where was it coming from? Suddenly I felt the weight at the foot of my bed shift. My heart froze. I wanted to move, to turn on the lights, to run, but I couldn't. My body was paralyzed, trapped in the liminal space between wakefulness and sleep. All I could do was listen and pray. It was all a figment of my imagination. Through the thick blanket of darkness, I could make out a vague figure standing by my window. It wasn't transparent like the ghosts you'd see in movies, but rather a shadowy silhouette against the lesser darkness of my room. It stood still, the only movement being a strange undulation as if the air around it was distorting. Then it moved. With every step, it seemed to glide effortlessly over the wooden floor. I expected to hear footsteps, but there was only silence punctuated by my increasingly loud heartbeat. With every inch it covered, my heart raced faster. I tried to scream, but no sound came out. As the figure advanced, its form became clearer. It wasn't human, not entirely. Its proportions were off. Its arms seemed longer, ending in fingers that were more akin to tendrils than anything human. When it was halfway to the bed, it stopped. It extended one of its arms, reaching out for the nightstand. My keychain, a silver trinket my sister had gifted me years ago, was right there. The tendrils brushed against it, and with an eerie slowness, the keychain slid off the nightstand and clattered onto the floor. The noise was disproportionately loud, echoing through the silence of the night. The figure resumed its movement. Closer, closer still. It was at the foot of my bed now. Its head, or what I assumed was its head, tilted slightly as if studying me. I could feel its cold presence, like an arctic wind seeping into my bones. My breaths became shallow, my fear strangling me. It began to stretch its other arm towards my face. I could see the tendrils pulsate, changing shapes, seeking. I tried with all my might to break the paralysis, to move, scream, do something. And then, as suddenly as it all began, I sat bolt upright, gasping for air. The room was silent once more. The night outside was still. The wind had died down, and the trees were still. I blinked, my eyes adjusting to the darkness. Had it been a dream? A night terror, my heart was still racing, the remnants of adrenaline coursing through my veins, but everything seemed normal. I reached out, my hand trembling to turn on the bedside lamp. The soft yellow light bahed the room, pushing away the shadows. The sense of relief was so overwhelming I nearly cried. It was then I noticed it. There on the floor beside the nightstand lay my silver keychain, the same one the dark figure had knocked over. The realization was a punch to the gut. I shot out of the bed, grabbing the keychain and clutching it as if it were a lifeline. 
the room felt colder, or perhaps it was just my imagination. The boundaries between dream and reality seemed to blur. I was trapped in a state of uncertain dread. The night stretched on, but sleep did not come. Every creak, every rustle set my nerves on edge. As dawn approached, I realized that the true horror was not in the encounter with the inexplicable. It was in the uncertainty that followed, the not knowing, the constant doubt. Was it a dream? Or had something truly dark visited me that night? The sun rose and the shadows receded, but the questions remained, and they were scarier than any phantom or night terror because they were unanswered and would remain so hidden in the recesses of the night. Waiting, perhaps to return again on another random night. Now I fear falling asleep even as sleep begins to fall upon me.